Hi everyone! Thank you so much for coming to my video. So here today, I'm gonna test out GoPro Hero 10 stabilization with Gimbal. I know that GoPro has surprisingly great EIS, which is electronic in-house stabilization. So holding with a pole might be good enough. However, in fact, using EIS has a downside to it, is that cropping the image and drop the quality of video. For some people like me, who wants to film with the best quality, cropping is not preferable. And we want to keep the true value of 4K or 5.3K. So I bought a $130 gimbal on Amazon, which is called Hohem iStudy Pro 4. I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. But anyway, let's unbox. Wait. Okay, so product come with the box like this and in it, it has gimbal and small extension pole which can be used as a tripod. I am not gonna talk too much about this product um, but if you want me to do reviewing then please feel free to comment and let me know. Okay, cool. So now the setup is done so let's get some videos. So today I tested this gimbal and also pull with some EIS in two different settings. One for just like a vlog style walking on the street and another one for skiing and snowboarding. Okay, so let's start. start with a deep look at gimbal without EIS and pole without EIS. There is an obvious difference you can see right away. But still, if we look closer, the image quality is pretty good in both settings. Moving to the next, pole with hypersmooth and gimbal without EIS. You can see how great hypersmooth is. But unfortunately, the image quality drops a bit. Is it acceptable for you? Let's check Hypersmooth Boost. I think you can tell that image are cropped a lot in Boost. The distance from him to the camera was a bit different in each shot. But still, it is pretty obvious. Still in the Boost settings, image quality drops a lot. Hypersmooth Boost looks somewhat weird, so I think if you go with a pole without gimbal, I would recommend standard Hypersmooth. Alright, so the comparison shows a lot, but before we conclude anything, let's also take a look at skin.
again, let's start with the pole and gimbal without hyper smooth. I can see shaking in both. Yeah, actually, gimbal works very poorly when it's windy. I also try to record a video without too much wind. I actually blocking the camera with my body. When shooting like this, the shake gets better and video looks pretty professional. Another thing to highlight, when you are using gimbal, you need to get used to it. Otherwise, like in this video, sometimes I shot completely off. So in this video, I'm trying to tilt the camera down like this. But as you can see here, the camera doesn't tilt because of the gimbal settings. So I have to know about it, I have to set up beforehand. It's a little bit annoying. And this is the videos after I fix the setting, it gets slightly better. Moving to the last comparison, Hyper Smooth Boost and Gimbal without EIS. It's really hard to tell which one is better, to be honest. Less shaking in Hyper Smooth, I guess. Yeah, also talking about the image quality, gimbal without EIS looks better, but not too much difference, I think. Oh, now you might wonder why I don't have a standard hyper smooth for skiing videos. Oh, I apologize, I completely forgot to film it. But next time I visit there, if you need, I will definitely film. Of course, we can do so many other comparisons, like with gimbal and standard hyper smooth or with gimbal and hyper smooth boost. All right. But with all the information and tests we have done, we summarize here. All right, so for vlog style, like shooting on the road, the image quality and cropping is best without EIS. And for standard hyper smooth, it's okay. But when it comes to hyper smooth boost, it's a little bit too much. And talking about shake, with gimbal, without EIS, it looks perfect. Standard hyper smooth, it's pretty good as well. And the same for hyper smooth boost. But sometimes the image looks kind of weird, so we have to be careful. And talking about time and effort for setting up, I think bringing gimbal shouldn't be too much. But yeah, of course, still, just bringing GoPro itself is much easier. And next one, the summary for skiing and snowboarding. Okay, so talking about image quality, gimbal without EIS looks pretty good. But compared to hyper smooth boost, that's not too much difference from what I see. Talking about shaking, gimbal without EIS looks pretty bad when it's windy, but hyper smooth boost looks pretty good. Alright, so the last thing, bringing gimbal to ski resort is, is a lot of time and a lot of efforts. Um, you have to charge another thing before you go to ski resort and you have to bring all your gimbal accessories in your backpack. Yeah, it's, it's pretty annoying. Obviously, bringing GoPro and the pole is much easier. Okay, now we summarize in two sentences. For just vlog style, definitely gimbal is pretty good. But for skiing and snowboarding, I think hyper smooth or hyper smooth boost will be good enough. But I think if you want to shoot with the best quality without compromise, maybe gimbal with standard hyper smooth might be the best option. Okay, going back to the original question, do we still need gimbal for GoPro Hero 10? My answer is no. I think shooting on ground, like vlog style, obviously it's better with the gimbal, but hyper smooth works pretty good as well. And talking about skiing and snowboarding, gimbal might not work perfectly. But of course, I will still bring gimbal because I bought, and also I love to keep the best quality of video. But yeah, please let me know what you think about it. If you enjoy it, please hit likes and subscribes. Your support is always makes me smile and motivated me to make more videos. I right. thanks so much and see you soon.